for our first comping idea, we'll start out with, again, some kind of smaller chord shapes. We've got organ player on the track, and he's filling up some space. So, uh, you know, we'll play a little bit of a smaller role here in regard to uh, our the depth or denseness of our chords. So I like to grab this little voicing here, which is a suspended sound, and then grabbing this uh, from there, th I'm thinking over the F chord in this portion. So like an F suspended, we've got the, the sus or the fourth, we've got the flat seven, and then our root, and then moving that down, the sus to the third, and leaving the flat seven and root there. So one. For our first measure, and then sliding into a B flat nine chord on top of that. You may have seen this shape before. In fact, I'm sure you have seen that shape before. We'll just use the top portion of that. So something like this, one, four, one. Just alternating there, one, one. flat major 9, E flat major 9, hit on an F9 chord on beat 1, and that'll happen every time. That's a big part of the form is giving that break on there. It lets the soloist kind of, uh, you know, add some nice spice in there, and also it's a nice break for the listener as well and sets up the top of the form. So again, 1, 4, 1. Four, one. Four, one. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Uh. I like to push those major chords too. That D flat major nine. You could look at this as a D uh, flat major six nine. Sometimes it's called that. You could also play D flat major seven here, up to E flat major seven. They're all in the same family. They all work well for one another. So, you know, whatever you choose is cool, as long as it's a major six or major seven type sound. So sometimes I'll use just the top four strings again on these and push it. So one, two, three, four, and, two, three, four, and. And, um, you know, that happens a lot. If you listen to the actual original recording of Cold Duck Time, I think they didn't know when, if they were going to do pushes or not, so <laughs> I think every time it was different. Sometimes it's pushed on the and, sometimes it's on the one. I think for our backing track purposes, we'll push it every time. So one, two, three, four, and, two, three, four, and, two, three, four, and. Okay, that's copying example one. Another thing we can do is add a little bit of a, a funky vibe to our comping. So we'll use the top of an F9 chord again, again, small voicings, and maybe go from there to a B flat 13. We'll play that instead of B flat 9, just to vary it up. Top of an F9 chord, and again, I'm just using the top four strings for a B flat 13. We don't need the, the bass notes. We don't want to strum across and get all of that thud into the sound. From there, just kind of keep our right hand or our picking hand moving along and uh, add some mutes and some chucks in there. One, two, three, four. That kind of vibe. Okay, same hits on the D-flat, E-flat part of it. If you noticed, I was trying to keep my hand going the entire time. And in order to mute, I'm basically just relieving the pressure of my fretting hand. And then when I strike the strings as my picking hand continues on and you know, an eighth note kind of groove, it's basically just muting those notes out. Fret it down. When I lift up, I'm hovering literally just above the actual chord that I'm playing. I don't lift off. I'm just basically muting those strings out. 
I'm also sliding into that F9 chord from a half step below. One. Same thing with that 13, slide end. That right hand, or my picking hand, if you're lefty, your left hand, I'm gonna give a shout out to all you lefties out there. Just keep that picking hand flowing. That's something uh, you know, that can be very useful for you. This is an effective way to play through and comp to get a little bit of funk into your sound, all right? So there you go, that's another example. So another thing I'd like to do is maybe take that first pattern that we learned where we had this sus sound going down to the third to the nine chord. But instead of hybrid picking that, which I should have mentioned before, I was using hybrid picking on that, so using pick and fingers. Typically the pick on the D string, and then middle and ring finger on the G and B strings respectively. Uh, fingers M and A if you're a classical player. So I was hybrid picking those before, but instead of using hybrid picking, maybe we can do the same thing that we did in example two where we keep that right hand flowing but then basically just use these voicings. So something like this. I think you get the idea, right? So keeping that right hand flowing again, but instead of using the nine to the 13, we'll use that same thing as before. Sus to the, to the third there, dominant, and then um, a B flat nine. Here's the difference. That's F9 to B flat 13. Here's the sus. A little sloppy there, but I think you get the idea, right? So. Those are a few comping ideas that we can use. Now that we've got those together, let's check out a few soloing ideas.